Invite a budget blind style consultant to show you how to transform your rooms just by changing your window coverings. Canada's number one choice for window coverings. Visit budgetblinds.ca today. This is New Cap News with Annika Notveit. Good evening. We begin with big news tonight from the Alberta Legislature. The province officially gets a new premier today at a ceremony in Edmonton. New Democrat Rachel Notley and her cabinet were sworn in at the provincial legislature. Notley says her cabinet will have 12 ministries, including herself, and they'll get to work quickly. However, the New Democrats aren't planning to table a budget until the fall. Today's ceremony also marks the official end of the province's 44-year progressive conservative dynasty. Notley will also hold the cabinet post of intergovernmental affairs. The 11 members of her cabinet are shown here. The new Ministry of Health and Seniors is Sarah Hoffman with a master's degree in educational policy studies. Previously working for 20 years with Agriculture Canada as a geotechnical technician, O'Neill Collier from White Court is the Minister of Agriculture and Forestry. Former teacher and school administrator Margaret McCog Boyd is the new Minister of Energy. Former Calgary Alderman Joe Cece is the new Finance Minister. David Egan is the Minister of Education, Culture and Tourism. Former NDP leader Brian Mason is the new Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation. The new Municipal Affairs and Service Alberta is Darren Bilios. Kathleen Gangley, a former Labour and Employment Lawyer in Calgary, is the Minister of Justice, Solicitor General and Aboriginal Affairs. Efren Sabur is the new Minister of Human Services. The new Minister of Innovation, Job Skills, Trading, Labour and Advanced Education is Laurie Sigberson. Shannon Phillips is the new Minister of Environment, Park Status of Women. All right, to news in Lloydminster now. A local veterinary clinic with a long history in the border city is now offering even more services. This says the Lloydminster Animal Hospital completes a major expansion. One, as Bart Pediasic explains, aims to give area horse owners a new option when one of their steeds gets sick. From cats and dogs to cattle and horses. Almost any kind of animals you can imagine have come through this clinic. Owning horses for more than 60 years, Rod Navanmeter knows a hospital well. Our first uh, place was usually to come here. If there was anything major, we'd probably go to uh, Edmonton or, or Saskatoon. But for local horse enthusiasts like Navanmeter, the trip down Highway 16 for major operations may soon be a thing of the past. Here we go. Yay! After a $50,000 investment and months of work, the Lloydminster Animal Hospital has officially opened their equine center, a fully stocked indoor facility that offers more services than ever before. We added a surgery suite, an indoor surgery suite, um, some hospitalization area and just some general work area uh, for doing more, uh, a little bit more specialized work on horses. A big upgrade according to Dr. Wenekamp, as before any surgeries performed had to be done outside. It had a lot of limitations, it's not clean, you know, there's not, um, there's not anywhere, you know, to do surgeries if it's, you know, inclement weather or in winter and so this just allows us to do, to do surgeries year-round. An upgrade that's so far getting good reviews. It just uh, really looks good. Hope it works. Bart Pediasic, New Cap News. It's a little shop that popped up downtown this spring. Headquarters clothing company doesn't just carry any brand. It's local and culturally inspired. It's a dream come true for Robert Cardinal. I talked about a clothing store with my friends and, and family for probably... They probably heard me talk about it for 15 years, and then uh, now here I am. The store is filled with unique designs and Aboriginal-inspired art like Haida. Cardinal says he was surprised he couldn't find any Aboriginal clothing in the area when one of the second largest reserves in Canada is just north of Lloydminster. There was nothing really available in Lloydminster, and we have a large surrounding Native population, and being Aboriginal myself, um, felt that it was just a really good fit. He says expressing their culture like this is a way to hang on to what's important. We're constantly seeing languages being lost and, and, and things like that, and, and what we need to do is we need to reverse that. You know, we need to make sure that our kids do know um, about our culture and, and so that it doesn't just fade away. 
After years of working in the oil field, he says having another vocational option is always good and he'd like to help others starting out. It does help uh, other uh, Aboriginal entrepreneurs that are, that are looking for avenues to promote their, their stuff. Um, they're more than welcome to always give me a call and, and, and we can work something out. Some local students won big at an American dance competition. More than 50 dancers went to Seattle for the Spotlight Dance Cup and they didn't come back empty handed. The dancers were amazing there, but it was just a nice feeling to know that this small city, our studio conquered it and did extremely well. And it just shows my kids that, you know, hard work pays off. It was really scary because lots of the girls, like they did dance a lot more than me. So I was just nervous not knowing what I was going up against. One notable win includes Jennifer Parsons' daughter, who placed first for all the novice solos under 11 years old. When her music played and she had won the whole thing, it was just, I was crying in the curtain. It was just really, really cool. After the unexpected success in Seattle, the group is considering Las Vegas for their next competition.